Hey everybody, today we're going to create something in my sketchbook that I started well over a year ago and I thought before we get started I wanted to decorate it and put some stickers on it because it still looks very plain. A lot of these are Taylor Swift related and she just announced international tour dates so pray for me that I can get tickets. And now the sketchbook looks a lot more fun and inviting and not plain anymore. So I kind of wanted to do that first. And for the artwork today, I'm going to use Karen markers. And this video is actually sponsored by Karen markers. I'm also using various brushes in different sizes and I'm using a watercolor sketchbook. I will try my best to leave links to everything in the description box. If there's not a link, then I couldn't find it, but I will at least name the kind of supply that I used. And like I said, I'm mostly using Karen markers in this video. I've worked with them for a long time. It's been, I believe, almost three years at this point. And I really enjoy these markers because they're very juicy and they blend a lot, especially on watercolor paper. I enjoy blending them with a lot of water so you can see that you can just blend them with a wet brush and then you can get all kinds of effects. You can also just blend them with each other. It depends on the kind of color that you're using and also how quick you are. Obviously, the wetter the ink still is, the easier it's gonna be to blend. And it also depends a little bit on the paper that you're using. Here I'm using a watercolor sketchbook from Etcher, which has quite a lot of texture for a watercolor sketchbook, if you ask me so the markers don't blend completely it honestly depends on what you're going for because on a smooth paper they might blend a lot but of course if they blend a lot then you can't add as many details because then they will always blend a little bit and on a more textured paper they won't blend as much but then you can add more details so it really depends on what you're going for and I always want to make the best out of every kind of medium that I'm using so I uh, really like using them on this paper because I like I said can go in with a lot of water and it can handle it and I'm having a lot of fun and you can see that I am painting this kind of abstract flower. I've done all kinds of these doodly colorful shapes in the past and I find that these types of things are a really good idea when you're feeling stuck, when you don't really know what to draw and you want something that's a little bit more low pressure and just something where you can play around with the paint or the ink then something like this is a really good idea and I gravitate towards these things again and again. But I wanted to have something going on, not just abstract shapes for this one. So I decided to go with a flower theme, which is still very simple and it has a lot of different shapes that you can incorporate in it. And I'm using a lot of different colors and I'm happy that it worked because when you're using a lot of different colors, it might be a little bit too much. So if you don't really feel that secure in your color selection, then I would recommend going for more of a limited color palette and not use too many different colors. You could, for example, just do blue tones and orange tones, maybe a little bit of pink, and then you would have a limited color scheme. Or you could also try to go more in a rainbow gradient order. That's what I do often in order to make my colors work. 
you can see here that I'm even using them kind of like a watercolor or like a liquid ink. I'm just dipping into the paint on different areas and just transferring it because those areas were a little bit too dark anyways and I wanted to color the other shapes with this color too. So I just transferred the ink from the one shape to the other. I hope that makes sense. And then decided to add in a little bit of pink to those blue shapes as well because I wanted to tie all of the colors together and I wanted them to work with each other. And like I said, I'm just playing around with the colors and playing around with the gradients in this one. And so this is a really good idea if you're just getting used to some type of marker or some type of paint that you haven't used a lot before then something like this could be a good exercise where you just get to know the medium and you don't really have to think too much about what it's gonna look like. I did a little bit of a sketch for the main flower, but then everything that was more towards the outside was more a spur of the moment decision and just something that I came up with on the go. If you've always wanted to fill a sketchbook from start to finish, but you are struggling with the finish part, then I have the perfect course for you where I teach you how to do exactly that. I'm taking you on a journey. I'm telling you how you can start a sketchbook and get into those first pages and just get over the hurdle of the blank page. And then I'm taking you along for the ride. I'm showing you specific examples and specific ideas that you can do in your sketchbook and I'm giving you some insights on how you can come up with your own ideas and then last but not least I'm sharing with you how you can actually finish a sketchbook. So check out the link in the description box to get the course. So you can see here that I now started to add a bit of greenery here, a few leaves, and I always started those with blue. Then I added in some green. And then on the outer side of the leaf, I added this orange, very light orange tone. And I get comments of people asking if I'm ruining the tips of the markers when I'm dipping them into a different color like I'm doing with the orange here when I'm going over the green. And the answer is that that doesn't ruin the marker. It just stains it for a little while. So that definitely happens. The orange marker looks a little bit green as you can see here. But then after just a few of these circles, it looks completely normal again. And then if I continue drawing with it, even the stain will disappear from the tip. So it's really not an issue. You could have a separate piece of paper where you can draw on until the marker is clean again. Or you could just be a little bit more messy in your approach like me. And I just used it to get these kind of gradients where I have my stained tip at the beginning and it is a little bit more of a green orange and then it turns more into a clean orange again. So I really don't worry about these things too much because these markers are so juicy that they fully recover from this. It's really not an issue with these. So that's what I really like here because I can be messy and don't have to think about these things. And if you want to try out the current markers, I will leave a link in the description box where you can check them out. So you can try them for yourself if you want to. You could do these ideas with other water soluble markers too, or you could do it with watercolors, with gouache, whatever you have. I'm just using the Karen markers here because they're especially fun to do these things. You can see that I am also dipping my tip into the wet surface and that doesn't hurt it either. 
You can see the orange in this clip here that it was super stained in the beginning and then I do a few circles and it already looks a lot better. And if I continue to do that, then it's clean again. And sometimes you have to wait for a little bit and then it's clean again. I don't know how that happens, but yeah, really not an issue, honestly. And I just enjoy playing around with this because I believe that's kind of what they were intended for, to play around with the inks and how they flow and blend. And that's really the fun part of these. And you can see that the piece is slowly coming together and the page is slowly starting to get filled. I also decided to add a few of these more doodly elements. I added in some circles, some lines, and just filled up the page basically. And here it's important for me to have a good composition, to have a mix of these bigger shapes and the smaller ones. So we have more of the finer details and more of the bigger shapes. So I didn't really want to add more detail to the bigger shapes in this case because I do have these finer lines that fill the rest of the page, if that makes sense. In other pieces, I have added even more details and you could definitely play around with this. And honestly, when it comes to more abstract pieces like this, and it doesn't really turn out in a way that you're happy with it, it definitely isn't your fault. I find that these things are kind of hit or miss. Sometimes they turn out really cool and sometimes they just don't. And you just have to try again and again until you get something that's cool. And even if you're not completely happy with the end result, I hope that you at least enjoyed the process because this is very satisfying to blend all of these colors and to create all of these colorful shapes shapes. So for me, even if it doesn't turn out completely like I wanted to, at the end of the day here, I'm just filling a sketchbook page and I'm playing around. So it's really not that big of a deal if it is not a perfect masterpiece that you could hang up on the wall. That's not the point of this type of drawing. So I just want to remind you and encourage you to actually try this. And if you feel self-doubt or anything, you're definitely not alone. I get these things too. Like I've been doing this for well over five years. I've turned it into my job and I still have the self-doubt. I guess it just doesn't really go away. And sometimes you just feel a little bit of a pressure. And honestly, it is. it takes a lot of courage to do something creative because you just don't know if it's going to turn out good, especially in traditional art where there's no going back. Like you can't really hit control C and erase something that easily. I mean, it depends. Sometimes you can cover up your mistakes, but it is kind of a gamble and sometimes it turns out really well and sometimes it doesn't and while I do try to focus on the process of course it isn't easy when you have an end product that you don't really like it's kind of you don't really know how to deal with that sometimes especially me when I'm filming for videos I don't know if I want to post it or not is it so far gone that I don't even want to put it on the internet or can it be salvaged or do I want to show it in order to show that not everything turns out good I don't know it's always kind of a balancing act and I just want you to know that that's completely normal and I get a lot of comments of people who feel like they're not talented enough or they're insecure they don't know where to start and honestly I just want to encourage you to just do it anyways I know it can be hard and it does take a lot of courage to do something creative and I want us to acknowledge that and not brush over the fact that this is definitely true and sometimes it just doesn't turn out good and there's no way around that and that's honestly part of the process but 
somehow also part of the beauty because if every single art piece was always guaranteed to turn out amazing, then it wouldn't be that interesting to even start because you already know what's gonna happen. So I find that that's actually the cool part of art. So I really hope that this video inspires you to actually pick up a paintbrush or a pen and just get started and just do something. Even if you don't really feel like you're good enough at it, even if you feel like you're in a little bit of a rut, just do something that's a little bit more low pressure like this one. So here is the finished result. And if you want to see more fun and easy sketchbook ideas, then check out this video next.